here today. I'm delighted and thrilled that CPAC invited me. Me, a foreigner, in your country. But you know, it's a funny thing. Since November the 8th, since the election of Donald J. Trump, every time I come to America, I'm feeling a little bit more American, I have to tell you. When, in years to come, the generations that follow us study the history of this period. There is one year that will stand out. There is one year that every school child will know. And that year is the year of 2016. Because in 2016 we witnessed the beginning of a global political revolution and it's one that is not going to stop. It's one that is going to roll out across the rest of the free world. I had, I had been fighting against Britain's membership of the European Union for 25 years. 25 years. And if you've, if you've endured abuse if you've been called deplorable, you've only had a few months of being abused. I've had 20 years of it. But you know what? None of it mattered. I always believed that we should govern our own country. I always believed we should be free to reach out and make our own deals with our real friends in the world. And it's funny, our real friends in the world speak English, have common law, and stand by us in times of crisis. So I battled away for all those years. I thought I might become the patron saint of lost causes. And then the referendum came along and we were told by vast sections of the media that we couldn't do it. We were told by many of the pollsters we couldn't do it. We were told by many of the commentators, any of this ring familiar with you guys? We were told by the commentators that we couldn't do it and they lined up all the big businesses, all the big banks, all the big politics, not just from Britain, but from across the world. Do you know we even had a visit from the 44th President of the United States of America? I will, to my dying day, be grateful that President Obama came to my country, <laughs> intervened in the referendum and told the United Kingdom's people, told America's greatest friend and ally in the world and told us that if we voted to get our independence, we would go to the back of the line. And the British people... The British people were so disgusted by Obama treating us like this that it put us up 2% in the polls. So, so I should always be, I should always be grateful to Obama. So the great day came, 23rd of June, 2016, and by three o'clock in the morning, it was clear that after a period of just after four decades in which our politically corrupt rulers had given away our independence, our democracy, our sovereignty, the ability to make our own laws, the ability to choose our own friends, the ability to make the right trade deals with the right countries. Oh, and they'd also given away control of our borders. And by three o'clock in the morning of June the 24th, it was clear the nightmare had come to an end. We had voted to get our country back. And I... I can't tell you. I can't tell you how thrilled and pleased that I'd felt. It seemed incredible that people had the courage to stand up against the entire establishment. But the brave British people did it. Oh, and by the way, the last opinion poll says that now 
8% of the British people want us to get on with Brexit. And then a funny thing happened. I went to the Republican convention in Cleveland and I realised, I realised that amongst the Republican activists and amongst the large chunk of the American people, there was something approaching Brexit mania. And I got the opportunity through my friends in Mississippi, through the governor of Mississippi, I got my opportunity. Would I stand on a platform with Donald J. Trump and would I tell that audience that what we'd done in Brexit was what you two could do here in America? And I told that audience, I told that audience, don't listen to the pollsters. Don't listen to the media. Don't listen to the commentators. They're trying to break your will. They're trying to make you stay at home. Don't listen to any of them. And I said, we got our country back on June 23rd, and you can get yours back too on November the 8th. And you know what? <laughs> I am pleased. I am pleased and proud that I did that in Mississippi and that I came to America many times in that campaign to give Donald Trump support. I'm proud to have been part of that campaign. I really am. And what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing 36 days in to the Trump presidency, I'm seeing something quite remarkable. I'm seeing an elected leader who is trying to put in place the platform on which he was elected. How about that? Because we've had years, haven't we, of people making promises, getting into power, and not even attempting to put into place the things upon which they've been elected. And I believe that Trump, who is determined, and we saw him this morning, didn't we? And wasn't he just superb? No, what Trump is doing by trying to put in place that ticket on which he was elected, he is restoring faith in the democratic process and good for him. Good for him. 2016, 2016 was the year that the nation state democracy made a comeback against the globalists and those who would wish to destroy everything that we have ever been. But of course, Trump, amazing personality that he is, could not have done it on his own. He had some good people behind him. He had people like Steve Bannon, Kellyanne Conway, and many others. But he also, he also had every single one of you, and this event is your celebration. Well done to all of you. Now, great though the night of June 23rd was, great though the night of November the 8th was, my favourite part of 2016 wasn't so much the victories, no, no. My favourite part of that evening of November the 8th was watching the faces of the CNN presenters. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? They haven't given up, have they? They are in deep denial. They would like to wind the clock back to 2015 to pretend that none of this had ever happened. But just as Brexit becomes more popular by the day, President Trump will become more popular in America by the day. No, they won't give up. And some of their biggest cheerleaders, I'm thinking of Tony Blair in particular. Oh, wow. So he's popular here too, is he? Bye. Good. I think of people like Tony Blair, who says that 2016 was just a blip. 2016 was an aberration. 2016 
was just an outpouring of anger from very poorly educated, stupid, virtually unwashed people. That's what Blair thinks. But Tony Blair is wrong. He's wrong because what happened in 2016 is not the end of this great global revolution. What happened in 2016 is the beginning of a great global revolution. And this will, this will, this will roll out across the rest of the West. We've got some very exciting elections coming up in the Netherlands, in France, in Germany, possibly even in Italy. And believe me, I don't yet know whether the results in 2017 will be as dramatic as the results in 2016. But what I do know is that even if the challengers don't get over the line in this year, what they will do is shift the centre of gravity of the entire debate. Because what is happening across Europe, what is happening across Europe is people are rejecting this form of supranational government. They're rejecting, they're rejecting the idea of being governed by a bunch of unelected old men in Brussels. Although I'm very, I'm very grateful to these unelected old men because I've had some real sport with them in the European Parliament over the last couple of years. And they're rejecting the absolute madness and idiocy of what Angela Merkel did 18 months ago when she opened up her doors. And we've got to be clear, we're not against anybody based on religion or ethnicity. We're not against anybody, but we're for ourselves. We're for our country. We're for our communities. We're for making our people safe and with less risk from global terror. That is what we're for. That is what we're for. And we're for our country. And we're for our people. And we are winning! Thank you. Thank you.